With the fuel flow now at a level the engine can handle, the vibration and flames disappear. Now the left engine appears to be functioning normally, when in fact it's fatally damaged. The crew naturally think they've shut down the correct engine. What they don't realize is that it is disconnecting the auto throttle that solves the problem, not, as they believe, closing down the right-hand engine. That particular effect of the auto throttle was the clincher which caused both pilots to believe that in retarding the right engine, they had identified the engine which was malfunctioning. It's a revelation to the investigators that the behavior of the 737's auto throttle might mislead pilots during an engine malfunction. And investigators are about to discover how a last terrible twist of fate snatches away the final chance to save flight 092. They're ready to be closing the localizer from the right. Eddie Trimble has one piece of the puzzle still to fit. Why did the flight crew not notice that they'd shut down the wrong engine in the 20 minutes they had between the initial crisis and crashing? Trawling through every nuance in the cockpit voice recordings, Trimble finds a poignant moment. 12 minutes and 15 seconds to disaster. The plane seems to be back to normal, but Captain Hunt's training tells him that after an in-flight crisis, it's essential to review all decisions to make sure no mistakes were made. What did we actually get? We got, we got vibration. But just as he starts his review, air traffic control interrupts him. The surface wind is indicating westerly at five knots. They clear Captain Hunt to descend to 1,200 meters for landing in 12 minutes' time. He does not resume the review of events with his first officer. Had he continued, he may have spotted his error. But tragically, the crew missed their last chance to prevent the crash. Four minutes and 40 seconds to go. We can arm approach now. Yes, Shen, we'll take flaps one, please. Uh, speed 190. The pilots increase throttle to the left engine to control their descent. What they don't realize is this act will deal the engine its fatal blow. Increasing the fan speed throws more debris from the fractured fan blade deep into the engine. Thrust is going. Losing the thrust. Okay. Tell them we've got a problem. It's now way. tearing itself apart, and, uh, and the runway is still 21 kilometers away. One minute to go. The engine loses all power. It now catches fire. It's got a fire in the number one engine. No, forget that. Just start the other one. Get it going. Captain Hunt has run out of time. He's lost both engines. In desperation, he tries to restart the right-hand engine with a windmill start, using the plane's speed to spin up the engine blades. She's not going. Get it out. She's not going. She's not going. Get it. But it's too late. Their airspeed is too low. Hunt pulls the nose up to stretch the glide. He keeps the aircraft in the air long enough to clear the village of Kegworth. But Captain Hunt knows it's all over. Ten seconds from impact. Captain Hunt makes his final announcement. It's not going, Captain. Prepare for crash landing. Prepare for crash landing. At 8.24 and 43 seconds, British Midland Flight 092 crashes into the motorway embankment at 185 kilometers per hour. Midland 092, this is East Midlands Radar, do you read? Midland 092, this is East Midlands Radar, do you read? Midland 092, East Midlands, do you read? <laughs> The plane comes to a stop just 900 meters from the airport runway. But five months after the crash, there's a final twist in the tale. A shocking discovery that grounds more than 30 of Boeing's brand new 737-400 aircraft worldwide.
400 series aircraft suffer identical fan blade fractures in flight. In both cases, the pilots read the signs correctly and land safely. The Civil Aviation Authority has tonight grounded all Britain's Boeing 737-400 aircraft. Aviation authorities around the world ground all planes with the same type of engine for urgent inspection. CFM, the engine's manufacturer, discovers a design fault in the fan blades. Running at maximum power above 7,600 meters, the low air density sets off a previously undetected vibration in the blades. The resulting stress can lead to fractures. It emerges that the engine was never tested in flight. The 737-400 aircraft and its engines are an upgrade of the 300 series. The engine was only bench tested in a laboratory. A flight test was not mandatory. If it had been, the potentially catastrophic vibration effect on the blades might have been detected. The engine manufacturer has to redesign the engine and refit 99 400 series aircraft. Aviation regulations now require manufacturers to flight test all new engines. Just over 18 months after the Kegworth air crash, the Air Accident Investigation Board publishes its report. It concludes that although the pilots made an error in shutting down the wrong engine, there were mitigating factors. The pilots had received no flight simulator training for the 737-400 series. That meant the first time they faced an emergency, it was for real. The vibration meters weren't prominent enough. And if a member of the cabin crew had alerted the captain to the flames coming from the left engine, which he couldn't see from the cockpit, the crash could have been averted. But for the survivors, the flight crew are heroes. It was just very, very sad that it was so, so close to have made it. And, you know, to have those two pilots put at such risk and to have worked so hard to have got so close, it, it, it's upsetting. The lessons learned from the Kegworth crash have had a wider impact on aviation safety. Boeing redesigned cockpit displays for new aircraft, making them easier to interpret. Simulator training is now mandatory if the design of an aircraft changes substantially. And airline training around the world now emphasizes and encourages full communication between cabin and flight crews, particularly during an in-flight emergency. Of the 126 passengers and crew on board, 47 lost their lives. For the survivors, nothing can erase the memory of that dreadful night. But they have rebuilt their lives. Chris Thompson and Nick Stevenson both recovered from their injuries. They're still in business together in Northern Ireland. Kieran Dynan is now married with a young daughter. You know, you still worry about things, but I don't worry about things like I used to anymore. I think all my bad luck came at once, and there's nothing ever as bad is going to happen again. Debbie Griffith left the airline industry to train as a nurse. You can't go through a plane crash without changing. It's made me live for the moment. I've always been fairly happy-go-lucky, but I've never felt bitter. I've never thought, why me? Why not me? Um, I'm nothing special. Gareth Jones's physical injuries on the night were minor, but the emotional scars are still with him. You did feel dirty afterwards that, you know, why me? Why did I survive? What had I done that was special? Um, and to a degree, that loses me to this day. I don't know why I, I escaped, apart from picking a lucky seat. The Boeing 737 is still the world's most popular aircraft. Today, a 737 takes off somewhere in the world every five seconds. Its safety record is one of the best in aviation. They are the best of all things old and new, and they are.